Almost five months after it, it officially began, the impeachment saga of President Donald Trump has come to an end tonight, but not without some last minute history. That's right. For the first time ever in an impeachment, a senator from the president's own party voted to convict. Mm -hmm. KCAL 9 political reporter Randy Page is here with more, Randy. So here we are. <laughs> we all knew how this would end, but the final chapter in this impeachment story brings into sharp focus just how divided this country is. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Inside this Senate chamber, 100 of the most powerful lawmakers in the world arguably made the most important decision of their political careers. Is the respondent Donald John Trump guilty or not guilty? Serving in the same Senate chamber, breathing the same air, but living in two separate universes. Today, the nation watched those worlds collide. You cannot be on the side of this president and be on the side of truth. And if we are to survive as a nation, we must choose truth. We will reject this incoherent case that comes nowhere near, nowhere near justifying the first presidential removal in history. This partisan impeachment will end today. One by one, each senator faithfully voted with their party. Each Democratic senator. Mr. Schumer. Mr. Schumer, guilty. And each Republican senator. Mr. McConnell. Mr. McConnell, not guilty. Except for one. Mr. Romney. Guilty. Mr. Romney, guilty. Earlier, before the vote, Senator Mitt Romney revealed the depth of his soul searching when he found it difficult to speak. My faith is at the heart of who I am. And then the senator from Utah explained the reason he chose to be the first lawmaker in U.S. history to vote to convict a president of his own party. What he did was not perfect. No, it was a flagrant assault on our electoral rights, our national security, and our fundamental values. Corrupting an election to keep oneself in office is perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. 67 votes were necessary to convict. Final tally on Article 1, abuse of power, 48 guilty. 52 not guilty. Donald John Trump, President of the United States, is not guilty as charged in the first article of impeachment. The Senate then acquitted President Trump on the second article of impeachment, obstruction, 53 to 47. He is hereby acquitted of the charges in said articles. We now have uh, two very different political universes, two different Americas. Uh, the uh, Republicans have their news sources, Democrats have their news sources, and it's not just disagreement over uh, political ideas, it's actually different views of reality. Claremont McKenna College professor of politics Jack Pitney says Senator Romney's vote to convict comes at a very steep cost. He is going to be attacked very vigorously. Other Republicans in Washington are going to shun him. And politically, he's going to lose more than he gains. There could be political costs for other Republican senators, those running for re-election in purple states, including Cory Gardner of Colorado. Mr. Gardner, not guilty. Susan Collins of Maine. Ms. Collins, not guilty. Tom Tillis of North Carolina. Mr. Tillis, not guilty. And Martha McSally from Arizona. Ms. McSally, not guilty. The Democrats are gunning for them. But Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell predicts the Democrats shot themselves in the foot, that Republicans will come out of this trial stronger than ever. Every one of our people in tough races, every one of them, is in better shape today than they were before the impeachment trial started. Immediately after the vote, President Trump retweeted this two-year-old cover from Time magazine that predicted Trumpism will be a powerful political force for years to come. And the president says he will give a speech from the White House tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. The subject is acquittal. All right, Randy, thanks so much.